Hey, what's up, people? Uh, this is Pastor Mark here, and I want to share with you guys something that um, I shared with the youth on Friday night. For those who weren't there, I want to just share this with you. Maybe you'll get something out of it, because I know when I shared on Friday, it was real powerful and impactful. And um, this is my first V-blog. It's a little weird looking at this little tiny hole in the middle of my uh, Mac laptop, my, my MacBook Pro. Uh, so bear with me. But I'm going to try to loosen up as I, as I get going. The scripture is Ephesians 1.4, and this is what it says. Before the world was created, God had Christ choose us to live with him and to be holy, innocent, and a loving people. Those are three things that I want to focus on right now. Before the foundation of the world, he created you. He created me. He set us apart. He said, these are three things that I want for you, for your life. He said, I want you to be holy. Why holy? Because he's holy. The Bible says, be holy because God is holy. How do you be holy? Holy is being set apart, being sanctified, consecrating your life for him. Not doing what your friends do. Not cussing up a storm when you see your friends cussing up a storm. Not going and stealing those things when your friends are stealing those things. Standing against evil. Standing against what's wrong. Standing for what's right. That's to be holy. Are we to be perfect? No. No one will ever attain perfection. The only one who was perfect on this earth was Jesus Christ himself when he walked 2,000 so years ago. God doesn't want perfection from us. He wants us to be holy though. He wants us to set our lives apart. Not live like the world even though we're in the world. And there's a lot the Bible says about that. In Ezekiel, God tells Ezekiel to go and sit amongst the people. Why? So he can get a sense of what the culture is all about. Did God tell Ezekiel to do what the people do? No. He said, sit amongst them for seven days. And at the end of seven days, I want you to give them a message from me. Ezekiel went and did that. One thing Ezekiel did not do is he did not become like the world. He didn't become the culture around him. So often the youth of this day and age, just we absorb and we, we conform to the culture around us. God doesn't want us to conform. The Bible says in Romans, be renewed in your mind. Don't be conformed to the patterns of this world. God wants us to be holy. The second thing is God wants us to be innocent. And I shared this with the youth on Friday night. Did you ever see those monkeys? Speak no evil, hear no evil, see no evil. When I said that, the youth were like, no, I don't know what you're talking about. So I guess I dated myself because that was quite a few years ago. But God wants us to be innocent. The Bible speaks about being innocent of evil. How are you innocent of evil? By not participating in evil. By planning ahead and thinking to yourself, is there going to be evil at this party? Is there going to be evil in this group of friends? Is there going to be evil when I go this direction? Is there going to be evil when I go in that direction? God wants us to be innocent of evil, innocent in our speaking, innocent in our mind, innocent in the things that we watch. And the third thing is, God wants us to be a loving people. How are we loving people? Well, G5 is the name of our youth group. Genea Philia, or Genea Phileo. Genea stands for generation, Phileo stands for love. Love is also translated into compassion, or feeling for one another. G5 stands for having compassion for all the kids that are walking around like zombies in, zombies in this world, in this culture. That are just, they're, they're full of consumerism. They consume, they consume, they, they, they're fixed on MTV, they're fixed on BET, they're absorbed in the latest trends of fashion. The hip hop culture has sucked them in. One of the goals in our youth group is to have compassion for their generation. To literally feel the pain that those people are suffering. Sometimes they don't even know they're suffering pain. God wants us to be a loving people. He wants us to see our brother stumbling in school and run over to him and help him up. He wants us to see when our friends are dissing somebody to go over and say, no, stop doing that. That's wrong. He wants us to stand up for what is right. He wants us to truly, truly be a loving people, people that are generous, people that are giving, people that have compassion. I'm fired up about this. This thing fills me up inside when I begin to speak about this because we need to stop being complacent. We need to start to create culture around us, not just sit back and let culture create us.
You get what I'm trying to say? Well, I'm going to stop here. I'm going to let you be blessed with the words that God wants to bring forth through this V-blog. I hope you are changed. I hope you are challenged. Peace. We'll see you on Friday.